Hi, I'm Elise, this is Witch Way, and today I'll be taking you through the witch lore of the much anticipated Hocus Pocus 2. Released in 2022, Hocus Pocus 2 stars Bette Midler as Winifred Sanderson, Kathy Najimy as Mary Sanderson, Sarah Jessica Parker as Sarah Sanderson, Whitney Peake as Becca, Melissa Escobedo as Izzy, Lilia Buckingham as Cassie, Sam Richardson as Gilbert, and Doug Jones as Billy Butcherson. During Becca's Halloween birthday ritual, the black flame candle is lit, and the Sanderson sisters are back, now on a mission of revenge on all of Salem. Becca, with the help of her friends, a magic store owner, and a zombie, must once again save Salem from the Sanderson sisters. The original Hocus Pocus opened Halloween night in 1693 with the events leading up to the hanging of the Sanderson sisters. The Salem Witch Trials ended in May of 1693, so stretching it a little bit there, but perhaps they made an exception for the Sanderson sisters, as they never even made it to trial. Neither did one of Sarah Jessica Parker's actual ancestors. On an episode of Who Do You Think You Are, it was revealed that Sarah Jessica Parker was related to one Esther Elwell, who was accused of sundry acts of witchcraft in 1692. It seems that she escaped the noose though, as she is not among those named as victims in the trials. Hocus Pocus 2 opens earlier in Salem's history, and we get to see the Sanderson sisters as children. These actresses did a phenomenal job of portraying the sisters' younger selves. The actress who portrays young Winifred in particular. She's also played a young witch in training before, voicing Earwig in the English version of Earwig and the Witch. Cute story, but terrible animation. But back to this movie. We see the sisters meet a mysterious witch in the woods of Salem, and they are given the book. This actually reneges on the original in how Winifred got the book. It was given to her by the devil himself. We could give it to them that rumours spread over time, but that doesn't explain away this scene in the original. <laughs> But I'm not going to be too nitpicky, this book has even more personality in this film, and two of the pages we have seen before, the title page and the page entitled Witch's Brew, are both seen in the original film. You can go and check out my original Hocus Pocus Witch Law for more of the book and the first film. But in this movie, we get some additional pages. One of the first pages we see has an extract of John Greenleaf Whittier's poem Mole Pitcher, named for the fortune teller of the same name who lived in Massachusetts, becoming quite famous for her divination abilities in New England during the early 1800s, well after any witch hysteria had died down. The rest of the pages we see were added for this film, particularly the page titled Magica Maxima, which has some interesting spell components. The head of a lover. Let's see what else. Witch's butter, mm -hmm. juice of Aurelia Berry. Witch's butter had me intrigued. This yellow golden fungus apparently got its name from something akin to a witch's familiar. According to The History of Witches, Ghosts, and Highland Seers, containing many wonderful, well-attested relations of supernatural appearances, etc., witches would create carriers, cat-like creatures who would steal butter, milk, bacon, and the like to take as offerings for the devil. These carriers would sometimes consume too much and vomit up their stomach contents in a bright yellow substance, often nearby a witch's house, and this substance was called Witch's Butter. We see Billy and Gilbert collecting the Witch's Butter. Gilbert is a magic shop owner running his store out of the old Sanderson sisters' house, and he is obsessed with the witches. He also sells replica black flame candles in his store. These aren't actual prop replicas, but made with a template created on the Eat the Dead blog, known for their food and dark arts and crafts. 
This image was made by photoshopping together some actual historical woodcuts, so beautifully done there. I will ensure to include a link in the description in case you want to try your hand at making your own. Gilbert is a showman as well as a magic shop owner, and posters of the stage magicians Houdini and Thurston can be seen hanging in his store. He also gives Becca and Izzy Angelica leaves. You burn them to lift curses. Did you take some? From my research, it appears that mostly the Angelica root is used in spellcraft, but it is seen as a powerful protective charm. The duo are buying supplies for Becca's birthday ritual. Luckily enough, she was born on Halloween, though they are both into witchy stuff. It's not witch stuff. During the ritual, they invoke the triple goddess. Another, Another year begins, begins anew. Maiden, mother, and crone too. The maiden, mother, crone concept has become slightly outdated, but it was a nice touch. Whitney Peake, who portrays Becca, has also had a witchy role before. She plays Judith in a few episodes of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and you can go and check out my witch lore reviews for more on that series. Hocus Pocus 2 scores for history-ish, lore, and the craft. Though these witches now seem to have innate abilities versus the assumed imbued abilities from the devil in the original. There are many nods to the original, we even see it playing on a TV screen, but this film was still able to become its own thing. It was so much fun to watch. Where the original had its own version of Screaming Jay Hawkins's I Put a Spell on You, this time they put their own spin on Elton John's The Bitch is Back. The witch is a bad. And Blondie's One Way or Another. We're gonna grab ya. I'll nab ya, I'll jab ya. Debbie Harry of Blondie has starred as a witch herself in Tales from the Dark Side and makes a cameo in the pilot episode of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I will definitely be watching this film again whenever I rewatch the original film. What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments below, as well as any other witchy recommendations for future witch lore reviews. Please remember to like this video, share it with anyone else you think might enjoy, and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on social media, linked in the description box, for some additional content. And as always, thank you very much for watching here on Which Way.